And this is what Ben Shapiro had to say about Joe Biden. That claim right there, that's a really big claim. Who is in it? Hunter, Joe, and a bunch of Mexican business people. I'm gonna do a total brain reset, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna zap my brain of all the information I know about this, all right? Okay. And then you and I, we're just gonna take a Joe, no, the internet. Oh, God. Look at the things you've seen. You're gonna build this argument for me that I don't even know what. I've already zapped my brain. I don't even know what your argument is. We're just gonna see what you have to say about it. The Burisma investigation timeline. What were the accusations? What were the results? How fast slash was it progressing? Those are my questions. That would be the first thing. The second thing would be, Joe Biden. So Joe Biden, president of the United States, continues to claim that he knew nothing whatsoever about Hunter Biden's business. Oh, we all want to talk about Burisma. All right, what do we got, Ben? This is not only unconvincing, it's pretty obviously a lie. Yesterday, the president of the United States was asked by a reporter about Hunter's business dealings. Obviously, he spent literally decades picking up bags of cash in far-flung countries ranging from China to Ukraine. And, uh, and Joe said the whole time he had no idea any of that was going on. In fact, he had said until five minutes ago that Hunter never did anything wrong. Then Hunter had to plead guilty on a couple of misdemeanor charges. He should have been hit with a felony gun charge as well. He probably shouldn't hit with, as we'll examine, felony tax charges, violation of the Foreign Agents Registration Act, and all of the rest. He didn't get hit with that, possibly because Merrick Garland, the attorney general for Joe Biden, basically said to prosecutors, "Do not go forward with any attempt to investigate my son in full or prosecute him in full." But in any case, Joe Biden is continuing to stick with very Really obvious lie <laughs> bro wait <laughs> can you imagine being this doing the jail stream with aiden ross today at 3 p.m est do me a favor and spam w sneako uh, sneako again Jesus. some of his fans get butthurt when i talk about ukraine the vaccine and the gender agenda very funny that the rumble chat thinks i'm too normie now and the kick chat thinks i'm too schizo i will plan a dust stream for tonight haven't forgot about the talent show tonight could be good for the talent show actually <laughs> oh my god okay that he usually and all of the rest, he didn't get hit with that, possibly because Merrick Garland, the Attorney General for Joe Biden, basically said to prosecutors, do not go forward with any attempt to investigate my son in full or prosecute him in full. But in any case, Joe Biden... I, okay, so I wrote down like five little guides that I would do, five little points I have about covering politics from like a from like a personal development or moral perspective. I feel like I should draft, maybe I'll take these to, to fights with me. I feel like I should draft when I talk to people, hey, here are some things that I think every single person that does media should do. One thing that I would really like to see, I go through painstaking efforts to do this, especially with people that I hate, is if I tell you somebody said something, I almost always show you like, if not a quote, like the full video, or if not the full video, at least a quote. Mm, I, like, I really don't like this habit of, so anyway, we're going to talk about Joe Biden today, who yesterday said it was okay to drink the blood of children. And there was this issue that came up where he brought it. And it's like, show me that. Because like, he's building a thesis. What? What, what kind of blood? Stuff of claims that, in my opinion, require justification and almost beg the question. Like, what he's saying is true. It's so horribly bad and terrible. And it's like, yeah, I don't know. Any attempt, Garland, the Attorney General, Foreign Agents Registration Act, and all of the rest, as we'll examine, felony tax charges, violation of the Foreign Agents Registration Act, and all of the rest, he didn't get hit with that, possibly because Merrick Garland, the Attorney General for Joe Biden, basically said to prosecutors, do not go forward with any attempt to investigate my son in full or prosecute him in full. Hold on. Ugh, this is a one-shot kill. Did he mix up Merrick Garland and Joe Biden there? Or it sounds like he said Merrick Garland said, don't investigate my son. Or was he just, was this a sentence I'm just not saying? Hold on. Examine felony tax charges, violation of the Foreign Agents Registration Act, and all of the rest. He didn't get hit with that, possibly because Merrick Garland, the Attorney General for Joe Biden, basically said to prosecutors, do not go forward with any attempt to investigate my son in full or prosecute him in full. But in any case. Like that claim right there, that's a, that's a really big claim. Even if I take this walk alone. Right? Like, I would like to see that substantiated. Like that claim. <laughs> yes, it is. In and of itself is, a, is like almost disqualifying. As, as president of the United States. Like, if the president of the United States is telling the DOJ, do not prosecute my son. That's a that's a huge claim. And it's funny that, like, I don't know if it's, like, a media illiteracy of, not of Ben Shapiro or Ben Shapiro's audience, why would you not say, like, here's a video showcasing where he said that thing, right? That's an insane... He said possibly? Is he referring to that one quote that we looked up where... Um, no, that was over something different. Where Joe Biden, like, privately said that he would... Yes, Hans. Merrick Garland would do something about Trump, and then people are like, Joe Biden applied pressure to Merrick Garland and pressured him into doing something? Is that the... Is it, like, the same... His audience doesn't care, they're primed to believe it. Yeah, I'm treating Ben Shapiro as a good faith internet news doer here. Okay. We don't tell you why editor is too lazy, I guess. Okay. Joe Biden is continuing to stick with a fairly obvious lie that he knew nothing, nothing, I knew nothing about um, about his son. Biden, how involved were you in your son's Chinese shakedown text message? Were you sitting there? Mr. Were you involved? Were no, you I wasn't. I don't know. Were you? No. No, no. Okay, well, um, I have some questions. Those questions involve, no. like, actual dates and times and timelines and texts. Because the evidence is very, very strong that Joe Biden actually was receiving money through Hunter's foreign connections. Let's look at like that's a really big claim. That's a really big claim. That's evidence. Depending on how that goes, it's arguably worse than anything Trump has done, right? That's a huge that's a huge assertion. Timeline for a second. So in 2013, when Joe Biden was vice president of the United States, this is NBC News reporting. Hunter Biden joined Joe Biden on a trip to China via Air Force Two. A quote with granddaughter Finnegan in tow, the Biden men sipped tea in a Confucian style tea house, leaked through books at local shops, and treated themselves to mid afternoon ice cream. But almost six years later, Biden's trip to Beijing is coming under scrutiny amid revelations about Donald Trump's efforts to dig up information to corroborate his corruption allegations regarding Biden. So, says Let's go. You're at, I don't know if you're doing that. Trying to right now, you're dead wrong. Depending on how that plays out, that would arguably be worse than anything Trump has done, right? If if Joe Biden is creating U.S. foreign policy agendas to personally enrich himself to the detriment of the United States or other countries, that is arguably one of the, like probably the worst thing a president has ever done in U.S. history. That would be insane. Okay. That would be an insane personal enrichment at the expense of U.S. foreign policy in other countries. That would be insane. If that's true.
Constitution. Almost six years later, Biden's trip to Beijing is coming under scrutiny amid revelations about Donald Trump's efforts to dig up information to corroborate his corruption allegations regarding Biden. So, says one of the NBC News reporters, he was with Joe Biden, apparently, during this trip. He was one of four reporters who traveled aboard Air Force Two with Biden and his son to China, a visit that was sandwiched between stops in Japan and South Korea. When we got on the plane on a bright Sunday afternoon and joined Pace Andrews, the Bidens were already on board, having just flown in from a family Thanksgiving gathering in Nantucket. What wasn't known then was that as he accompanied his father to China, Hunter Biden was forming a Chinese private equity fund that Associates said at the time was planning to raise big money, including from China. Hunter Biden has acknowledged meeting with Jonathan Lee, a Chinese banker and his partner in the fund during the trip, although his spokesman said it was just a social visit. The Chinese business license that brought the new fund into existence was issued by Shanghai authorities 10 days after the trip with Hunter Biden, a member of the board. So, again, think about those dates. We're now talking about 2013. Joe Biden brings Hunter Biden along with him on Air Force Two. Ten days later, Hunter Biden closes a round of funding from a Chinese business person. All Chinese business people at the top level are functionaries of the Chinese Communist government. Did they cut that deal with Hunter Biden because he's such an excellent business person? Is, it, so, is this all the evidence? This is so weird. Uh, this, might, this might be what we talked about. Um, uh, let's see. I think Rob will be ready soon. In like 10 minutes. And there's a debate coming up with Rob. Person? Of course not. Hunter Biden's spokesperson, George Messiers, told NBC News that Hunter Biden wasn't initially an owner of the company and has never gotten paid for serving on the board. He said Hunter didn't acquire an equity interest in the fund until 2017, after his father had left office, which means that it was a delayed payoff. I mean, that, that's, that's all that means. They cut the deal in 2013, and he basically said, I can't get the payoff until after my dad leaves office in 2017. In any case, the notion that Hunter and Joe were riding on Air Force Two to China together, and that Joe had no idea what Hunter was doing, that's really, really dubious. And of course, that's... Okay, we'll see. That's not the only... We'll see what... We'll see what... <laughs> so okay. Rob, we'll see what Rob Norris says, I guess. This is so... This is disappointing open business conversation that was happening in the immediate proximity of Joe Biden. According to Miranda Devine reporting for the New York Post in 2021, Joe invited Hunter's foreign associates to breakfast meetings at his vice presidential residence and to his office in the White House, according to Hunter Biden's laptop. He took his son on Air Force Two to countries where Hunter was doing business deals on at least one occasion, including one of Hunter's business partners on the trip itself. Among the more than 100 events scheduled in Hunter's diary at the VP's residence at the Naval Observatory in Washington, D.C., there are meetings which appear to overlap with Hunter's business interests. According to the laptop, quote, breakfast with dad, nav ops, that's one such meeting, recorded for 8.30 a.m., November 19th, 2015. Five photographs, date stamped on that day, taken at 10.03 and 10.04 a.m., appear on the laptop, showing Joe posing with four of Hunter's business associates, including Mexican billionaires Carlos Slim and Miguel Aleman Velasco. Here's that picture. Who is in it? Hunter, Joe, and a bunch of Mexican business people. One photo also features Velasco's son. Like, let's say, hypothetically, they did do an illegitimate or illegal business dealing, right? Let's say that, that was the Porto. case. Nice. Is it like, hey guys, just penned a mega illegal business deal that we shouldn't have been involved in that would be impeachable? Pose for a photograph? Like, like, <laughs> like, hey, this is my dad. He's the president. Like, you guys want a picture, right? Like, I feel like we need more than just a photograph. You need more than a photograph. There is no smoking gun here. Like, there's, it's a, it's a picture. Like, chances are, this is just a guess, and I don't know this, okay? Because I haven't seen the president in real life before, or any ex-president in real life before. My guess is going to be anytime you are in the vicinity of the president of the United States or the vice president of the United States, you're probably going to ask for it. I mean, you want to take a picture of this picture. That'd be a guess. Now, I could be wrong. Could be wrong, but that'd be my guess, okay? Um, the, the, the idea that... Is it anything? I'm just, I'm like, part of my part. selfie! Illegal selfie time! Like... Not that it, that's not impossible. And I'm not saying this is exculpatory. Like, oh, they took a selfie. There's no way they did anything illegal. They could have. But I'm just saying, like, this is such weak evidence. It would be like saying, like, look, they all signed in on the Facebook check-in my location time at the same, like, hotel. They must be up to no good. Like, hey, guys, check-in for the illegal crack deal. Like, let's go. Like, <laughs> Miguel Aleman Magnani, the founder of budget airline Interjet, at whose Acapulco mansion Hunter and wife Kathleen had stayed that March. Jeff Cooper, a longtime Biden family benefactor. Obviously, going the Hunter Biden cock pictures. I'm going to go ahead and take a, a quick guess. So, guess. I'm gonna guess that the Hunter Biden pics probably weren't gonna ever go public. You probably didn't expect those things to be leaked publicly. That'd be my guess. These pictures, they look a little bit more, uh, a little bit less candid, a little bit more posed, a little bit more public. That's, now, that's just a guess. I could be wrong, okay, but. Who ran one of the largest asbestos litigation firms in the country also appears along with Hunter. Cooper and Hunter had been working on energy deals in Mexico and elsewhere in Latin America. A 2013 email from Cooper demonstrates their high expectations of the association with the Alamán dynasty. Cooper's association with the Bidens began in 2005 when he started filing multi million dollar lawsuits in Delaware in connection with Joe's late son, Bo Biden's firm, Viferato, Gentilotti, and Biden. When Joe became vice president, Cooper then put Hunter on the board of his venture capital firm, Eudora Global, and gave him shares in the business, netting Hunter about 80 grand a year, according to documents on the laptop. In 2015, Hunter also received a one-time payment of $300,000 from Eudora. So why exactly was Hunter Biden on the board? Well, to use his dad's name in order to obviously trump up business for Cooper. Simmons Cooper put up a $1 million investment in investment capital for Hunter and his uncle Jim's aboard of attempts to run a hedge fund in 2009 when the venture ended the Bidens returned cash. Cooper joined the VP's entourage on Air Force Two to Mexico in 2016, where he and Hunter were trying to negotiate an ill-fated petroleum deal with Aleman Magnani. So again, fairly obvious that Joe knew about all this. He was squaring around Hunter's business partner. And that's, of course, not the only evidence. We have more evidence of what exactly Hunter Biden was doing and the fact that Joe... Yeah, to be clear, so far we have seen absolutely zero evidence, Ben. But okay, just to be... Just we're all on the same page. We have... Right now we're sitting at no evidence. But maybe there will be... Maybe yeah. we'll see some evidence. We obviously knew about it in one second first. 
It takes a special kind of company to want to partner with our company here at Daily Wire. We say a lot of controversial stuff. A lot of people are afraid of us saying those controversial things. But Pure Talk is not afraid of that, which is why they stand behind us. It's just one reason we stand behind them as well. Pure Talk shares my values as well as the values of the other hosts here at Daily Wire. That's why we made them the official wireless partner of the Daily Wire. But that's not the only reason. We check the coverage. It's premium. Pure Talk is the most dependable 5G network in the United States. I use it myself. Mix and match your plans. Fit every person in your family. Choose from talk, text, and 5G data. Yeah. Just 20 bucks a month, all the way up to unlimited data with mobile hotspot for 55 bucks a month. Remember, you vote with how you spend your money. So stop supporting woke wireless companies that don't support you and switch on over Bro, to Pure Talk today. I hate woke wireless companies. Ugh. Head over to puretalk.com slash Shapiro, save an additional 50% off your very first month of coverage. That's puretalk.com slash Shapiro. Pure Talk is wireless for Americans by Americans. I use their coverage. All my business calls are Pure Talk. Pure Talk is a great company. They'll give you great coverage and they don't hate your guts like a lot of the other phone companies do. Go check them out right now. Puretalk.com slash Shapiro, save an additional 50% off your very first month of coverage. Okay, so other evidence that Hunter was connected with Joe and that Joe knew full well about it. So fast forward to May 23rd, 2017. Mm -hmm. On May 23rd, 2017, okay. Hunter's business associate suggested a deal in which 10% of a Chinese business venture should be held by H for the big guy. Held by H for the big guy. So what exactly does that mean? People were wondering who the hell is the big guy? What exactly is the big guy? Well, I mean, it turns out that the same business associate who is calling, who, who says held by H for the big guy in his email, also happened to be the same person who uh, in other email exchanges and text exchanges calls Joe Biden the big guy. So that question was already answered. <laughs> okay. Okay. Held by H, 10% for the big guy, this Chinese business deal. That was May 23rd, 2017. Fast forward. I have no idea what you just said. Just about two months, July 30th, 2017. Okay, let's say hypothetically then that's true. Do we have business transactions, financial transactions, financial statements, bank records? Is there anything to prove it? Like, I, I, I how, guess. No other cards. Subpoenaing or something. For, do we have any information about any of this at all? 17. Joe Biden, his son, Hunter, has a WhatsApp to the head of CEFC China Energy Company. Quote, I'm sitting here with my father. We would like to understand why the commitment made has not been fulfilled. Hey, Stephen. Long time fan for your second two days. Great thing you still do well. Be passionate about stuff. I wanted to ask you any background and stats. If not, when you read academia, how do you vet your academic paper citations? I mean, it just depends on the paper. But I mean, like, if a paper is cited by a lot of people, I don't think you normally need to, like, have a background in stats also to just understand a paper. But I mean, I guess it, I mean, I'm also not doing, like, hyper complicated analysis of econ papers, so. What's happening? Uh, you know, just chilling out, Max. Relaxing. I don't know if you're a fresh prince. I don't know if I'd go that far. I am the fresh prince. All right. So, you want to talk about Biden corruption, the impeachment inquiry and stuff? No, I just want to talk about the, the Hunter Biden stuff, okay? Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, so, I gotta let me give me like two seconds to set this up so I can burn all my fuel off. So I, can... I, will say any I, don't really care. I don't care at all about Hunter Biden. I don't oh, even really care about I guess not. I don't even care about the institutional. I think that's it for the Ben Sapiro there. On the other, here's a title that you can watch other stuff on this channel. It's on the Devon on Sapiro.